where you know you have gotten wrong. Your destiny is your life. That is your identity. That is your future. And that is your success. There is no way you can cope from someone and expect something good out of that. A photocopy is not an original copy. Your destiny is your true identity. Make no mistake. And I, I, I want to write a book. Let me say, I'm writing a book concerning this one. Because as long as you don't know that God created you in his own way, and before you, you know you were born to this world, he declared something upon your life. That you be this. No one knows. Except God Almighty. There are so many, you know, examples that they can cite concerning our destiny. No one can enter heaven and change your destiny. It is sin that gives your enemy power to mislead you through your situation. Let's go to the book of 1 Samuel 16. We look at David. Don't forget that after David, there was no king like David. Not even his children. Solomon, you know, became the king after his father. But he was not like King David. I hope and trust you. Well, Let's go to verse 1. This is the story that all of us know, but I want to bring this one in a different way about our destiny. God is the one who created you and made you to be who you are and who you become in the near future. Listen to verse 1. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you mourn for Saul since I have rejected him? as a king over Israel. Fill your own with oil and be on your way. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem. I have chosen one of his sons to be a king without a name. I have chosen one of his sons to be what? A king. He never said I've chosen Abinadab or Eliab or Dev. He said one of his what? His son. Of course, you know in your mind, as long as there's elder son in the house, it's automatically that everyone will be thinking that, no, our elder brother will be what? The king. This is God Almighty talking to a prophet. Why are you mourning for this king that have been rejected? Feel your own. Go to Bethlehem. I'm sending you to Jesse. Go and anoint one of, I mean, I have chosen one of his sons. Jesse never prayed for his son to be a king. Bear it in mind. He never fasted for his son to become what? The king of Israel. In fact, he was not even thinking about that one. It was far beyond his, you know, dreams. He never knew that there's a king in his house. All what he knew is that I have got sons. I don't know if they were eight. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. But Samuel said, how can I go? If so here about it, he will kill me. That is the answer of every human being. The creator is talking to you. And he has told you already that I have rejected this one. And then you are telling that, no, if this man here that I'm going to anoint, he will kill me. Who can kill your destiny when God is the one who is driving you? We look at these two people. The prophet confessed what? Fear. He said, King Saul will kill me. Who appointed King Saul to be a king? Is he not God Almighty? Can he allow 
the one he appointed to kill his prophet? No. The prophet confessed what? Fear. This is the prophet of God. Who can hear from God? Talk less of you. Who cannot even understand your own dream? Sometimes when you wake up, you don't know whether you dream or you not. Ah, this is the prophet who can hear from God dialect. He said, if this man here that I'm going, you know, to Jesus' house, he'll kill me. Listen to this. This is verse, verse 2. No. Verse, verse 2, yes. The Lord said, take a heifer with you and say, I have, I have come to sacrifice the Lord. Mm. Let me ask you this question. Are you, can you say God was also lying? Because he was sending this man to go and anoint the king. But after the prophet said, the, the, the king, the current king, you will kill me. He said, no, just uh, take this and man say, I'm going to sacrifice. Can you say it was lying? Answer me. I'm sure you, you understand the statement. He was sent to anoint the king. But the man said, they will kill me. Then God said, just carry this and say, I'm going to sacrifice them. And yet, he was going there to do what? You are not hearing me. Let me just carry you. Verse 3. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what to do. Invite who? Jesse. That is the father of who? David. And I will show you what to do. You are to anoint for me the one I indicate. He did not say, go and ask the father who is wise in that house. Who is humble? Who is a hard worker? Before you bring them, first talk to the father private. He said, no. Invite Jesse and anoint the king for me. The one that I will indicate. Jesse never knew that he, David was the king in the house. It's a long story anyway, but I want you to take a point. No one can remember you that you can do this. No one can remember you that can fill this vacancy where you are working. No one can consider you that you can do this better than this one, except God Almighty. Because God owns every man's heart. Even without a Bible, this corruption, this animal that has been there now, for you to be employed, it's either you sleep with this one or you pay the money. God cannot operate in your life in such a way. No. David was in the bush. Let me just go directly to the point because of time. <clears throat> Follow me. Where are we now? Verse 4. Samuel did what the Lord said. When he arrived at Bethlehem, the elders of the town trembled when they met him. They asked him, do you come in peace? Because before now, when you see a prophet, be worried. It is now that you are praying with this prophet of our generation. A prophet of God, if you see a prophet in your house or in your town, be worried. Or you hear the prophet calling you, know for sure that, hey, I don't... It is now that you can joke with this, you know, prophet, you can just call him, say something about him. It is not you to tell the prophet. It is God Almighty to tell the prophet what to say about your life. So they were, you know, trembling to say, ha, a prophet in our town. Hey, what happened? Prophet, are you here in peace? It is now that we are joking with men of God. <laughs> Sometimes if you read the Bible, you see, I was, uh, is it this morning? Yes. I, 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 I'm afraid. I don't know who is going to be saved now. 
If you remember the story about the uh, Philistines and the Israelites when they captured the, the, the covenant box. Even the people who received the covenant box after, you know, that demon, is it Dagon or Dagon, something like that? The God of the Philistines. Where every, every morning they open their temple, they find that their God is on the floor. Every morning they, are, they said, ah, we are in trouble. Tuma, my problem is here, sir. They said, take these things to the Israelites, otherwise we are going to die. Now, the, the, the issue I want to pick is that immediately they took that covenant to the border. The people who received the covenant box, they tried to check what is inside. Seventy people died just to temper the covenant box. Today, we are joking with God because he is he, not very close to you. You are alone. You can, say, you can say whatever. But if God is on your side, you be conscious of what you are doing. Listen to what God said. I'm sure you read the Bible. Hmm? But the Lord said to Samuel, do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. Looking at the brother, the appearance and everything, and the father just know that he, since God might want to anoint the king in my house, I think it, it must be Ariab. The elder what? Brother of these people. He said no. Until Jesse brought all his sons, he never thought of David. Read the Bible, it's here. You are there with the Bible. He never thought of David or tell the prophet at all. David, it was the prophet who said, There he said, Oh, there is one in the bush. Meaning he was not considered by the father. He said there is one in the bush is looking after, you know, animal. <laughs> Even the, you know, the, the introduction of, you know, David, you can see that the father was telling the prophet that that one cannot be a king. He's in the bush. Are you there? Oh, there is one. How can you forget about your children? But God anointed David before he became King David. The prophet said, go and bring him. We are not going to sit down until we see him here. The last born. The last man in the house. The one in the bush. In the family, they knew David as a shepherd of what? The animals, sheep or gods. But in heaven, they knew David as a great what? King. Come on, people of God. I don't know if you, you understand this language. In heaven, David was known to be a great what? A great king. He in his father's house, they knew him as a shepherd. Kachema wambushi. Marichema pwembushi. 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 Marichema Bring him. Bamuleta. There is no competition in destiny. What God said about your life before you become who you have become today is what will be. Whether they like it or not. Whether everyone is rejecting you. No one is thinking about you. Your destiny is greater than your rejection. Your destiny is greater than your sickness. I'm telling you the truth. Your destiny is greater than the level of your education. Don't be deceived by the standard of this world. When God, you know, created you, there was nothing like a degree or masters. He said, let us make man in our own image. There was no degree. He said, a human being with a great what? Destiny. There are people who are learning big companies. They can't even write their names. People with masters, they are the ones who are running up. Yes, boss. Yes, boss. Yes, boss. A quanka who cannot even write his own name is running a company. Why are you deceiving yourself? There is no competition in destiny. And no one can kill your destiny. What God said about your life must come to pass. The only thing you need to do is to hate sin. 
Sin is the only thing that Satan can use to cover your destiny. And he starts misreading you. David was in the bush. This is the father standing before the prophet. How can you forget about your child? Honestly speaking. You bring this one, you bring instead of saying, Oh, prophet, oh, go and bring David. He's in the bush. Bring him. He wanted to convince the prophet that you know the one in the bush cannot be the king, only here, because that one likes what? Bush. In his father's house, David was known to be what? A bushman. He never knew a great what? King. Look at his children, first of all. Before Solomon became the king, the stepbrother by the name of Adonijah wanted to take over the kingship from the father. He even organized some people to go somewhere, including Joab, the army commander. David was about to go. But the one who was destined to be the king after his father was Solomon. Adonijah started the celebration at the riverside. Ah, they heard that they, is, they are celebrating that he, he said, who is that one? Adonijah. Ah, Bechaba ran to the king. King, this is what you promised. He said, bring Solomon here. You get the picture. There is no competition. You cannot force yourself to be where you want to be without the support of your creator. This one can perform a miracle. That is his destiny. If I look at his miracle, I said, me too, I'm going to perform. You are fighting a long battle. It is not your destiny. This is a problem now. This is a problem if you see this one is a teacher, is a teacher. Everyone wants to be a teacher. Now, but you start to police. Are you a police officer in your destiny? Follow your destiny. David became what? Tell your neighbors and neighbor. There is no competition in destiny. Your destiny is your destiny. No one can take away from you. Yes, there is no competition. He was in the bush. Who remember David? Is he not God Almighty? The father never thought about David. The prophet asked him, Are they, you know, all your children? They are all here. He said, No, there's one. Here's David. Follow the story of David. You'll be inspired that, yes, even if there is no one who can speak on your behalf, God is there for you to back his word. No one can take away his word from your life. What he said about your life is what you become. Whether they like it or not, hmm? no one can take away from you. Your destiny is your what? Your destiny. David became the great king. He ran as a king. Why are you underletting yourself? Even if you know the family where you are coming from, they are all poor. Your destiny is not poor. Come on, people of God. Whether your father is a farmer, a shoemaker, a fisherman, your mother just selling tomato, it doesn't mean that you too, you start selling tomato. No, that is mindset. Ask God about your destiny. He will let you know who you are. Not that you are not to live. But what fear is that you are not But what is that you are not Because you are a great child in that house. No. You are not a great child in that house. You are not a great child in that house. No. You are not a great child in that no, that is not your destiny. What God said about your life is what you see. And let your enemy, you know, be shocked that, ah, ah, that is my destiny. Hmm? In business, rising and falling. Hmm, let me end there. I'm just, you know, uh, trying to bring you back to your, your destiny. 
and I'm believing God for this. And I know that those who are paying attention to his word and hate sin, you are coming back to your destiny. The next thing that you see is progress in your life. In Jesus Christ's name. What the doctor said about your life is not your destiny. It is their professional. It is their machine. Follow what God said about your what? Your life. Even if they are saying, you, you cannot make it. Is it Bible that you cannot make it? Is it the word from your creator? No. So, please, take this word. And I'm believing God that even by the time you know, uh, you see this fruit, you, you, you are going to remember that, yes, that man talked about destiny. Say it to your neighbor once again before I enter this room. Say, there's no competition in destiny. Yes. Those who are making it now, that is their destiny. Their destiny is mature. Tomorrow is going to be you. Thank you. God bless you.